Good morning, USA. Yo, 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 Good morning, Angela Yee. Good morning, DJ MV. Charlemagne the God. Peace to the planet. It's Monday. Yes, it's Monday. Back to the work week. Good morning. We are here, man, after another great weekend of NFL football, man. Drop one of the clues bombs if your team's three and one. Your team's not three and one, I can't relate. Okay? Just throwing that out there this morning <laughs> on this fine Monday My morning. Goodness. What's happening, Cowboy Nation, Blue Star Gang? How oh, you feel? It's so quick how you change sides. Week one, you were like, well, we're going to get a good pick this first year. First of all, first of all, first of all, don't ever say I changed sides. How, how, since you've known me, what have I been? A loser. A, okay. Of who? <laughs> of what team? The Dallas Cowboys. All right. Cowgirls. I ain't like y'all. I don't jump. Oh, the Jets just winning the day no, and I'm, the Giants winning the day and you know, the Buffalo Bills and whoever. No. I'm a Giants. I'm consistent through I'm and through. I'm a Giants fan. Okay. I, I consistently every year pick a different team. That is facts. That is facts. But yes, the uh, New York Giants are three and one drop a, bra- a bomb for the New York Giants. Are y'all three and one? Yes, we all, sir. Who, 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 who beat y'all? I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> who's the who's the, I don't talk who's, about the, the lo- who's the lone loss to, that y'all have this season? I don't know. I don't oh, talk okay. about the past. All right. all right. Shout out to everybody out in Atlanta. I was in Atlanta this weekend for the BET Hip Hop Awards. Which airs, I believe, uh, Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah, it's Tuesday. Yes, mm-hmm. uh, excited about that. Shout to Fat Joe who hosted the show. Uh, so many special surprise performances. It was just dope. I was doing the red carpeting and uh, had a great time. So shout out to BET and my BET family over there. I can't wait for you guys to check it out. On I saw Tuesday. you out there all in pink, representing for all them little girls you got at the house. That's pink right. Panther. I saw you. That's right. My daughter, uh, my six year old, picked out that uh, that uh, sports jacket. In it looked pants. like it. What yes. were her options? Oh, I mean, I have many different jobs. Oh, so you had it in the house already? Yeah, yeah. It was, okay, it was I thought you guys yeah. went shopping. No, 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 no. It was uh, in my wardrobe, and my daughter wanted me to wear the you pink. You knew she was going to pick that. Yeah, so I wore the pink for my baby girl. So she styled And you was repping for Atlanta. What's that? Pink. What you mean? What's that? <laughs> a man in pink in Atlanta doing his thing, right? The big pink. Real men wear pink. All right, if you say so. Nothing wrong with that. that. Nothing. And okay. shout out to Kirk Franklin. I was with Kirk Franklin over the weekend. He actually stopped by my coffee shop. Coffee Uplifts People, and then I did his podcast live at the Paley Center. And then I had an event at Juices for Life, our juice bar in Brooklyn, to kick off a National Domestic Violence Awareness Month. When I tell you people were in there crying, mm. there were women who, one woman's daughter was killed when she was 20 years old by her boyfriend. Um, you know, shout out to Stephanie. She has an organization in Harlem called Harm, and she has a whole booklet of women who were killed by... Uh, domestic violence from their husbands or mm. their significant others and it was really difficult you know to sit through some of this but also to talk about solutions and to give people a place where they can go if they need to seek refuge or get help getting back on their feet okay all right well yes this this is the month and, and I'm sure we'll, we'll get more into that mm-hmm. All right, but we got front page news next. What are we talking about? All right, well, let's talk about uh, Governor Gavin Newsom in California. He has now signed a bill, and that bill has to do with rap lyrics as evidence in court. All right, we'll get to that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Right. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get in some front page news. Seahawks beat the Lions 48-45. That was a high-scoring game. Giants uh, washed the Bears 2012. Chargers beat the Texans 34-24. Cowboys barely got by the Commanders 25-10. I don't know why you sitting there telling that lie. Our defense is stellar. Our defense is elite. Drop on the clues bomb for the Dallas Cowboys. Defense, damn it. Our defense is elite. Yeah, y'all attack that ball pretty good. You the, damn right we do. The Bills beat the Ravens 23-20. The Raiders beat the Broncos. The Chiefs beat the Buccaneers 41-31. The Jets won yesterday. They came back 24-20. Titans beat the Colts 24-17. Falcons beat the Browns 23-20. The Eagles uh, came back to beat the Jaguars 29-21. Cardinals beat the Panthers 26-16. The Packers beat the Patriots 27-24. Now tonight... And Monday Night Football, the 49ers take on the Rams. Now, I know next week, I think uh, my Giants play out in London. So, 
Uh, that's uh, some sports for you. What else we got, Easy? All right. Well, California Governor Gavin Newsom has now signed a bill, and that bill will limit the use of rap lyrics as evidence in criminal proceedings. So according to this bill, uh, the governor has said that California courts must consider, if relevant and provided, testimony on the context of a genre of creative expression, research demonstrating that the introduction of a particular type of expression introduces racial bias into the proceedings. So they are limiting the use of rap lyrics in California criminal court proceedings. And this did pass unanimously in the California State Senate and Assembly. It also encompasses the use of performance art, visual art, poetry, literature, film, and other media. Well, folks are not getting locked up simply because they're rapping about things that could be considered criminal. Folks are getting, you know, locked up for rapping about actual crimes they committed. There is a difference. And that bill still doesn't address the problem. The problem is people committing crimes, number one, and then, you know, rapping about those crimes in their songs. If you are stupid enough to commit crimes and then confess to them in your lyrics, then you earn whatever consequences come with that. And keep in mind, it says limited. Yeah, it's limited. <laughs> doesn't, it, mean, it doesn't mean they won't use your lyrics. Correct. It's just limited, okay? Yeah. So right. the governor said artists of all kinds should be able to create without the fear of unfair and prejudicial prosecution. Because sometimes somebody might be doing a rap about a situation or something that somebody else that they know did or something from the past. So yeah. should that... And, 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 but, if, but like Charlamagne said, if you're dumb enough to do a crime and to detail it in your lyrics, you should go And to people jail. acting like lyrics is the first piece of evidence they use in these investigations. No, they've already investigated you. They've already... They're fully aware that you've committed this crime. They're just using this as another piece of evidence Correct. in these cases. All right. Now, StockX has canceled orders after a $100 coupon leaked overnight. So they've already made things a little more expensive. There's a new $4 shipping fee for sellers that officially kicks in this month. But they also now have canceled a whole bunch of orders. There was a $100 StockX discount. They started making the rounds on Twitter and Reddit. Mm. And it could be added at checkout. And there were no limits, no exceptions. So people went wild with this code as the glitch picked up traction. Some people even used it to buy items that were about $100, like some Yeezy slides. So essentially getting items for free. I don't blame them for that. The Yeezy slides is very comfortable, by the way. Dropping a clues bonds for Yeezy slides. Do they, do, they, do they have to honor all those things or no? They... No, they canceled all those orders. Oh, oh damn. Yeah, so for everybody that tried to use Nobody that, got through. that code, uh, they got a statement from StockX from Complex. And they said, at StockX, protecting the integrity of our marketplace is of the utmost importance to us. We recently discovered unauthorized use of a coupon code. As such, we have canceled these orders. All Damn right. It, man. Well, that is your front page news. All right. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, phone lines are wide open again. 800-585-1051. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. I'm Dallin. Hey, what you doing, man? I'm Dallin. This is your time to get it off your chest. Whether you're mad or blessed. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? What's up, Envy? What's up, Trav? Easy. Hey, Trav. Hey, bro. What's up, Sean? Peace, sis. How you doing, man? Other than being 3-1 and one out here in these streets. Other than being 3-1 out here in these streets. Drop one of the bomb for the Dallas Cowboys. Hey. 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 Defense wins championships. I wouldn't doubt it. No, defense definitely wins championships. Envy. Yes, sir. I thought you had looking like a little pink Power Ranger. You ain't, you, you ain't like my little pink Power Ranger outfit? I looking like a little Starburst. I saw you, Envy, looking all hefty, handsome and dusty. Looking like a little pocket Let me tell you something. <laughs> Trav is going hard for you, Envy, because you owe him a lot. Listen, Envy, I saw you looking awesome. You were looking cute. You look a little sassy. A little sassy. You look real handsome. Oh, well, <laughs> well, thank you, Trav. I take that as a compliment, sir. And I want to say one more thing. Look, JT, I don't know if y'all saw JT defending Uzi yesterday. And JT said something real yesterday. JT, she said that she was like, um, that y'all out here talking about Uzi little belly button ring, little belly ring. And she said, y'all men can't wait to get away from y'all women. So they can meet you for a pair of Marys. But JT, they doing it for a perk 30 and a 4 for 4. They don't need no Marys. I have no you idea what the hell y'all talking about. I was lost too. Wait, what's going on? A Marys? A little Uzi got a belly ring. Okay. And people was calling Lil Uzi gay because he had a belly ring. Mm-hmm. So JT was saying, JT was, got on there saying like, oh, well, y'all men can't, get, can't wait to get away from y'all so they can for a pair of Mary. Ooh, oh, okay. Well, Charlamagne got a little and belly ring. How much do a Mary's cost? I don't have a belly ring. No, you don't. Charlamagne, you better not have no belly ring. He took I it don't. out. 
I've never had I've never had any piercings. I think I had an so earring. I had an earring once that. back in the day. <laughs> Who's your rock star? But Charlamagne, if you get a belly ring, you gain. What? I don't, I don't <laughs> want. Now, why I don't is want that? A, I don't want a belly ring. <laughs> if you get a belly ring and you come in here wearing some Amiri's, we know. <laughs> we know where you got a butt trap. <laughs> Goodness gracious. <laughs> Hello, who's this? Hey, good morning. This is Jackie from Montclair. Hey, Jackie He's from Jackie. New Jersey. All right, Montclair. Montclair. Get it off your chest. Well, I want to get out my chest, Charlemagne. I am trying to register for this mental health, mental wealth um, expo. Yes, ma'am. And every time I do one, um, it only allows me to do it through iHeart. Even if I go through the, the uh, website, it's not allowing me to register. No, nah, that's it. When you go to mentalwealthexpo.com, it'll take you to the... Landing page, but it's on uh, iHeartRadio.com. Uh, but it's the same thing. As long as, yeah, no, there's no confirmation. As long as you registered, uh, they have your information. So all you got to do is just show up. Okay. Yeah, this right, Saturday, guys. 11 to 3 at the Marriott Marquis Times Square. All right. We'll see you on Saturday then. Yes, ma'am. Right, uh, enjoy, okay? Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Whether you're man or black, say it with your chest. We want to hear from you on the Breakfast Club. So if you got something on your mind, let it out. Hello, who's this? Good morning. I want to stay anonymous. Sorry. All right. Good morning, anonymous. All right, anonymous. Get it off your chest. Oh my God, I've been dealing with someone for seven years. I broke up last year. We have two kids, two young kids, seven and one. Now my seven-year-old goes to charter school. My one-year-old goes to daycare. I have a vehicle. He does it, but he borrows a vehicle. Every day, I have to wake up when they're with him and take them to school or daycare. Last week, they missed school and daycare because he was being so lazy and I didn't feel good and he didn't want to take them. Mind you, we live in two different places, two different sides of the Bronx. It's like, why can't you compromise? Like, what's wrong with, I think he's the most evil tourist in the world. Mm, like, mm, mm. it doesn't make sense. That is evil. Yes, it is. It, 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 it's not nothing new. It, it, it's like an ongoing thing, and it's horrible. Like, my man, you're a biological babysitter at this point, and you don't want to do nothing. Jeez, a biological <laughs> babysitter, dang. So he's just really doing it to make your life harder? Pretty much, because if it was about the kids, you would do anything for them, regardless of what I do for them. Do what you're supposed to do as a dad. Right. What I do as a mom has nothing to do with you. And then it's hard, because it's not like you want your kids to ever know you know, what you have to go through or how difficult it is, so you still got to put on that good face. Question, question though, Queen, is that true what you just said when you said, you know, what he does as a father has nothing to do with you? Because, I mean, shouldn't it be a co-parenting situation? It should, but at this point, it's not. So, technically, it has nothing to do with you. When I buy them clothes, that has nothing to do with your home. You're supposed to buy them clothes also for That's your true. home. When I buy them food for my home, mm-hmm. you're supposed to buy them food for your home. That's how it goes. Yeah, be That's a true. parent. I wouldn't, I wouldn't overlap with the clothes, though. <laughs> If I take if I send them, I'll never get them back. True. Hello, who's this? Good morning, it's Charles from Fort Myers. Hey, what's up, Charles? Get it off your chest, bro. Hey, we're down here in Fort Myers out here. We just got hit by Hurricane Ian. Man, I I seen the pictures, man. Fort Myers looked like it got leveled. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I said, said good morning, Charlemagne. Good morning. Good MD. morning. Um, good morning, I'm, I'm brother. Sorry. Good morning, brother. <laughs> um, yeah, man, we got hit pretty bad down here. But what I've been seeing on the news, they've been showing like the good neighborhoods, you know, where the tourists come down, how bad it got hurt. And, you know, I feel bad for them people, but they're not bringing awareness to areas like Harlem Heights, Pine Manors, and Lehigh. Well, we got affected, but these are black and brown neighborhoods. Like, there's nobody out here helping us. There's mm. no power. There's no Red Cross. There's nobody out here giving us a hand right now. Yeah, I just seen that in USA Today. They were saying black neighborhoods, uh, residents say that they aren't counting on help because they, they never get help. They say a historically black area of storm battle for Myers, uh, Dunbar, and other cities. They saying uh, there's no help. There's no power, no water, no power grids. They said that, you know, everybody's on their own. Yeah, everybody got to yeah. make sure they raise their voice. Kirk Franklin said he's going to go out there and, and help out. I think him and Plies are doing something. Yeah, Plies is from Dunbar. He should come out here. I mean, a lot of people should come and check out what's yeah. going on because, man, we got we got hit bad. I mean, we have my house. We have water to the roof. Ooh, I'm yes. glad I'm glad you said that, man, because, you know, a lot of people, they got on uh, the vice president, Kamala Harris, uh, this week because, you know, she said that she feels like federal hurricane in relief should be based on 
equity and that the Biden administration will prioritize people in communities of color. And she got a lot of backlash for that. But because of what you just said is why she probably made that statement. Right. You know, the, the, those low income communities and communities of color, those are the ones that are most impacted by these extreme, you know, conditions a lot of the times. So, you know, I don't have a problem with her saying that. Yeah, I mean, we, we need the help, too. I mean, we're, we're humans. We're suffering, too, and everything. I mean, we're coming together. It's weird because most most of my neighbors, I didn't know them, but now we're talking to each other, and we're heading out, like, two hours away to go get water. So, wow. you know, we're, we're just trying to raise money right now. So if anybody has a cash app, I could throw a cash app out there, and you guys could send something. Anybody that's willing to help, we're going to go drive all the way to Cluiston to the Home Depot to go get water because they didn't get affected at all and they got plenty of water over there. All right, well, we can't even flush our toilet. Stay in wow. contact with us, okay? Put your cash app out there, brother. Um, the cash app is Lord Seaway 507. It's L O R D C W A Y 507. All right, brother, be Lord safe Seaway out there, man. Lord Seaway 507. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. We got uh, rumors on the way, ye? Yes, and let's talk about Antonio Brown. Uh, NFL fans are in disbelief after he exposed himself to guests at a pool in Dubai. We'll tell you what he has to say in his defense. All right, we'll get into that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Listen up. It's just the end. All the gossip. 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 The Rumor Report. Gossip. gossip. With Angela. Angela Yee. It's The Rumor Report. The Breakfast Club. All right. Well, Antonio Brown, there is video that has been circulating where he exposed himself to guests while swimming in a pool at a hotel in Dubai. They're saying this incident took place on May 14th, according to the New York Post. He was staying at the Armani Hotel Dubai. The footage has gone viral. May 14th. Yeah, they're saying that's when the the incident took place. And they said... uh, he is shown shoving his backside into the face of a woman and then he lifts up his penis and flashes it in her direction. Eyewitnesses said that he had just met the woman and she was very upset after the encounter, according to the Post. Well, Antonio Brown went to Twitter to respond to this clip that was leaked and he said every chance they get to sway the heat off themselves, they use me. In the video, you can clearly see she runs off with my swimming trunks. If roles were reversed, the headlines would read AB having a wild night with a nude female. Yet when it's me, it automatically becomes a hate crime. It's crazy to me that even after I retire, there is disinformation coming out about me. Ironically, during a time when the NFL is getting heat for allowing players to play when they're clearly concussed, they've been using black men as guinea pigs. All right, so that is his response. He also posted a picture of himself with Tom Brady's wife, Giselle, and not sure what that's about. No, he posted it because he knew people would start talking about that instead of talking about, you know, I guess him exposing himself in the pool. All right, in addition to that, he did a freestyle and addressed the incident. It ain't no much, love, love. I said, eat it ain't no much. You eat me for breakfast and for lunch. I got a dinner coming over. She about to eat it like she cashing over. Boy, that some clothes I had a drip out in that fashion over. Oh, I'm trying to turn the fear. They trying to turn me down. I had a in the pool. She took my draw. Then she turned me around. I'm taking out and I'm showing off. I'm showing off goody too. Woo. All right. So I guess that's him addressing the incident and showing off his rapping skills at the same time. But not sure what exactly the full story is. He, there's his side and then there's what the New York Post is reporting. Mm-hmm. All right, now Beyonce is celebrating Solange's new music made for the New York City Ballet. She posted a picture of Solange and said, my beloved sister, there are no words to express the pride and admiration I have for you. You are a visionary and one of one. Congratulations on being the first African-American woman to compose for the New York City Ballet. The piece you composed is phenomenal. I love you deep. Might I suggest you don't F with my sis. Okay. And Salon shared some pictures on her page. She said, heart so full. She did a whole carousel where she was riding in the back of a limo with her friends. Also a page of the music notes from the score and herself with Tina Knowles and Beyonce. I'm dropping a clue bomb for Solange Knowles. Congratulations to her. That is such a huge deal for Solange, man. And I know this is like something that, with her creativity, uh, right up her alley. So she... Uh, yeah, like we said, first African-American woman ever to make music for the New York City Ballet. 
All right, now Will Smith, his first major film after everything that happened with the Oscars, Emancipation, has gotten a lot of praise at a screening that they had. They had a, a special screening of this movie from Apple, and it's from director Antoine Fuqua. And Will Smith stars as Peter, an enslaved man who runs away from Louisiana in search of his family, and he ends up joining the Union Army. So, yeah, y'all know that famous picture where you see the, uh, in, the the enslaved brother with the the whelps across his back. Mm -hmm. That's who he plays in this film. Now, after the screening, Will Smith said, "Throughout my career, I've turned down many films that were set in slavery. I never wanted to show us like that." And then this picture came along, and this is not a film about slavery. This is a film about freedom. This is a film about resilience. This is a film about faith. So apparently from people who went to that special screening, they're saying it was an amazing movie. All right. This is something that Trav brought up this morning on Get It Off Your Chest. He was talking about um, JT and some things that she had to say after little Uzi Vert got his belly button ring. And, and Trav, you are correct. She did say that, um, you know, uh, guys would get that and then, you know, your man is doing whatever for some Amiri jeans. She also, by the way, and this is JT from the City Girls, had an incident in the airport where a fan was following her aggressively and she said she was ready to fight her. She said, I walk in the airport um, and she's like, so this girl is like, oh my God, it's JT. So y'all know I have anxiety. I don't know why, but I said, hey, so fast she didn't get a chance to really say much because I damn near ran to the escalator. Why I'm going up the escalator, I feel hot breath on my neck. A turnaround, it's her. Now I'm in my head, mad as F. Because why are you following me? And to make it worse, she had her phone up. So now I'm extra nervous. So I'm like, are you recording me? She said, no, I'm on FaceTime. Aggressive. I'm like, okay, stop following me. She got loud. Oh, you really like that in real life? Now I'm lost. But since you want to go there, yeah, I am. What I am. What's up? She said, this is my city in her New York voice. So now I'm ready to fight because what you mean, your city girl? Move now. So boom, she really still following me. But the ticketing gate was literally right there. So I'm like, okay, cool. She'll eventually get the F, but she didn't, y'all. She really still followed me. So she said the girl was basically following her to the gate, and she went off on her, and she said, uh, I'm a human, not a dog. So that was her whole incident. Can you imagine being in the airport and somebody is following you around with their phone up? Yeah. In 2022, yes. That's the era that we live in. People just walk up on you with their phone out, you know, like already recording, Bro. asking you questions. Like, yes, it happens all the time, I was, sadly. I was DJing the Giants game, and a dude walked up next to me with his phone and just started recording me next to him <laughs> as I'm DJing. I'm like, bro. I was at the airport a couple weeks ago. Dude just walked up to me and was like, had his phone out recording. He's like, yo, Safari rap was really that terrible? <laughs> and wanted to get your reaction to go viral. Yeah. Well, and JT did say she ended up meeting another girl, and she said, we had a good encounter. She was so respectful, asked for a picture. I said, no, I'm not in the mood. Her and her husband was like, I understand. I felt so happy somebody finally got it. I asked what she do. She's a lawyer who wants to rap. I followed her on IG. So a lawyer that, who wants to rap? Yeah, she said, the second girl was God's way of showing me he's near, and I'm always good with him, even when people go out their way to make me look crazy and mean for protecting myself. Yo, I promise you, if you're a lawyer, you don't need to rap. You might need to learn some rhymes, so if you're in the courthouse, you can say things like, you know, if it, the glove don't fit, you must acquit, but you don't need to rap if you're already a lawyer, queen. Just want to throw that out there. That might be a passion. Right, well, do that in your spare time. That's a hobby. Don't Please don't quit being a lawyer to rap. Please. And anybody who gives you that bad, that advice is, is a terrible human. She might be nice. Man, we need more people. Are there any we other lawyer rappers that we know? Anybody oh God. Has anybody made it big as a lawyer and a rapper? <laughs> no. <laughs> we would know. I'm I'm what do you asking. mean you're trying to think we would know? This is an interesting. You know who is a lawyer now who used to rap? Who? Oh. Uh, Tracy Lee. Remember him? He did that song. The I'm theme. dropping the clues bonds of Tracy you know, Lee. Smart. He's an entertainment attorney. Smart. He went from rap to being a lawyer. That makes sense. You don't go from a lawyer to a rapper. <laughs> Shout out to Tracy Lee. All right, well, that is your uh, rumor report. All right, front page news. The next one we're talking about. Um, well, let's talk about Hurricane Ian. And uh, at least 81 people in Florida have died. And then also at least four additional people were reported dead in North Carolina because of Hurricane Ian. We'll give you some more updates. All right, we'll get to that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Our audible pick of the day is Monsters and How to Tame Them. Hear Kevin Hart's hilarious and smart advice on low self-esteem. Start listening when you sign up for a free 30-day trial at the home of storytelling. Audible.com slash Breakfast Club. It's morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. Mm -hmm. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's Happy get some Monday. front page news. 
In sports, Seahawks beat the Lions, Giants beat the Bears. Drop a bomb for the Giants, please. Chargers beat the Texans, the Bills beat the Ravens, Raiders beat the Broncos, Chiefs beat the Buccaneers, Packers beat the Patriots, Cardinals beat the Panthers, the Eagles barely got by the Jaguars, 29-21, Falcons beat the Browns, 23-20, the Titans beat the Colts, and the Jets beat the Steelers. And then Monday night football! And the Cowboys beat the, uh, what are they, the Cobra Commanders? Commanders. Who are they? The Washington Commanders. Whatever. By the way, that's a stupid name. I think so, too. (laughs) That name is so stupid. But yes, they beat that football team in Washington. All right. Okay. And tonight, the 49ers take on the Rams. Now, what else we got, Easy? All right. Well, dozens of people have died after Hurricane Ian has slammed into Florida and North Carolina. At least 81 people in Florida have died, according to local officials. And four additional people were reported dead in North Carolina as well. So the death spans multiple counties in Florida. And, you know, it's still rising. So they said upward of 700 people were rescued in one county in Florida, but... Unfortunately, uh, the causes of the death in Florida were primarily drownings, as well as two vehicle accidents and a roofing accident. They also said a lot of homeowners don't have flood insurance in Florida. According to reports, only 13 to 15 percent of Florida homeowners have flood insurance. And in areas of Metro Orlando, that number is below 5 percent. That's crazy. So they do recommend that all Americans include flood insurance in their financial protection package. 90% of U.S. disasters involve flooding, by the way. So make sure for everybody listening right now, do your annual insurance checkup. Make sure you review your coverage with insurance agents so that you have the coverage that you do need. I will say this thing with everything so expensive. Most people only put flood insurance on the house if they're in a flood zone. Because if you think about it. And then you, that's even more expensive. Yeah, too, if, yeah. If, But if you own a home and your house never floods and you've had insurance for 20, 30 years and flood insurance is expensive and then we get one you know one hurricane and that floods your house you know it's very expensive for flood insurance you know I think in Florida they would require it because it seems like Florida gets flooded out a lot I mean and I've seen a lot of flooding listen we've had a lot of flooding issues in New York I saw Detroit Mm -hmm. the streets were um at a certain point, twice, I think, in the last year, got flooded a lot of people's properties. So, mm-hmm. yes, just review well, your insurance. You better get used to it since nobody want to take climate change seriously. Right. Okay, since nobody want to take climate change seriously. Trust me, the flooding is only going to get worse. All right, now, Tesla revealed a prototype of a humanoid robot that it says could be a future product for them. It's called Optimus by Tesla. And at Tesla's AI day, that robot walked across the stage, waved at the crowd, and then was up there for about one minute. So Elon Musk said the robot was operating without a tether for the first time. Usually they have the tether to support the robot because they can't walk enough themselves without falling and damaging themselves. But this Optimus abilities are... Uh, you know, I guess now able to just walk without the tether. They, the robot can do a lot more than what was shown, according to Elon Musk. He said, we just didn't want it to fall on its face. So the robot can do simple tasks like carrying boxes, watering the plants with a watering can. And if this is produced in mass volume, it would probably cost less than $20,000, according scary. to Elon Musk. That is very scary. Why are we in the end game now, guys? Yeah, that is I mean, Tesla scary. has the self-driving cars. Would you want your car to drive? I still wouldn't trust that. Yeah, you still have to touch it every uh, once in a while. It just, it just doesn't drive on its own. You still got to make sure you're up. But the problem with that is, you know how many jobs it will take? You know, if you know, think about it. You're talking about watering grass, and then the next is cutting grass, and next working at fast food restaurants, next working at, at shopping malls. They already took the tolls out. There's nobody at the tolls anymore. So where all these jobs well, going? Well, that, these people the, that had jobs. That's why they should have built a wall around Silicon Valley. Y'all too busy wanting to build a wall to keep the Mexicans out. You need to keep these artificial intelligence out, okay? All right. Well, this Optimus by Tesla. This is not the first automaker, by the way, who has made one of these robots. Uh, Hyundai also has one, and so does Honda. So they've been working on theirs also. Well, what y'all going to do when the robots uh, take over the world, okay? Like, we haven't seen a million movies about this. All right, throughout the, throughout the history of life. Would y'all get a robot? Anybody forget I robot? For any reason? Yes. You would? Yeah. For what? Security. <laughs> <laughs> Until that robot turns on you. <laughs> Let's not forget the opening uh, sequences of RoboCop when they had that, uh, before before they created the RoboCop, they had that other robot that went crazy. That was supposed or to be for security. somebody hacks the yeah, robot. Right. Yeah, somebody hacks it, yeah. I got time for that, man. All right, well, that is your front page news. All right, thank you, Missy. Like we ain't never seen Terminator. Robocop, iRobot. All right. Well, let's talk. Wally. Let's talk about what, what uh, <laughs> was trending on uh, social media in Utah. Mm-hmm. So there was a groom who died before the wedding, and the venue will not give the money back to the bride. 
So imagine that happens. And now the venue isn't going to say this is some extenuating circumstances. We should give you back your money. It was about two weeks before the wedding. Right. So people are, are, are uh, upset that the venue will not give uh, the young woman back her money now. We have audio. Let's play the audio. Everyone reimbursed us except for the venue. Their policy is very clear on the contract. It says no refunds unless it's a 90 day. I just don't understand people that are not willing to have a little bit of compassion in times like this because these weren't foreseen circumstances. It's not like we had a 90 days of, oh, we knew this was going to happen. The family says the venue, Woodhaven Point, wouldn't offer a cash refund. They admit they spread the word and people started criticizing Woodhaven on social media and leaving negative reviews. In a statement, the venue's attorney said in part that Woodhaven expressed that it was willing to explore other ways to resolve Ms. Ramirez's signed contract and that no final decisions had been made regarding Ms. Ramirez's contract when the family began threatening litigation and making other negative comments about Woodhaven on social media. All right, well, let's talk about it. 800-585-1051. You know, does, does this, should this venue give them back their money? I mean, that's just disgusting. What's disgusting? Is it? Yeah. yeah, that, yeah give no, them it's back not. Their, I don't know, know if it's disgusting. It I don't is. have to worry about it. You've got to have some type of empathy and compassion. Absolutely. Yeah, but also you got to understand that, that that business might not be doing well, and they, they might have booked out that wedding for that weekend. And because that wedding is not happening in that time, that is lost wages, lost funds, lost everything that they put together. So they're not going to have another venue. You don't know if they have to pay staff, if they had to pay for food, if they had to start paying for the flowers pay and decorations. Pay staff before they work? I mean, it's, it's a simple... It's, it's, you still get signed on. The verses here is business versus ethics, right? Like there's business and mm. then there's ethics. Mm. Business-wise, they aren't wrong, right? Because there's, a, there's a clear-cut policy. Correct. Ethically, it's debatable, but I don't know if I would use the word disgusting. It is. I think so. I Imagine the grief this woman is going through. Her husband is dead. Her soon-to-be husband is dead. Mm -hmm. And now I'm also out of some money. I agree, but I, would, I, don't know if, I don't know if I call it dis disgusting. I think so. Slightly unethical, maybe. Yeah, like I said, it's debatable. It's you know, it's still business at the end of the day. Business-wise, they aren't wrong at all. Ethically, that's the debate. And we don't know what type of venue it is. It could be a mom and pop venue that needs the money. And it could be maybe they book to, to, to pay their bills. I think most bills. funeral homes are mom and pop. I don't think it's not a funeral home. It was a wedding. Yeah. Oh, it was a wedding. It was yeah, they a wedding. Oh. It was a wedding, and I believe it was a funeral home. The they... gentleman committed suicide two weeks before the wedding. Well, you, you still business wise, and... business wise, they aren't wrong. Mm -hmm. Ethically, it's debatable. All right, well, let's talk about it. Eight hundred five eight five one zero five one. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. The most dangerous morning show. Put some respect on it. The Breakfast Club. It's topic time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Let's talk about it. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Now, if you're just joining us, we're talking about uh, something that's been trending the last couple of days. Uh, what happened out in Utah? You want to break it down, Yeezy? Yes, a family in Utah says they're dealing not only with losing a loved one before a wedding, but also a venue that won't refund them their money. They were supposed to get married, but unfortunately, the husband-to-be, Kevin, committed suicide two weeks before the wedding. And we're asking 800-585-1051. What are your thoughts? And here is the uh, news report. Everyone reimbursed us except for the venue. Their policy is very clear on the contract. It says no refunds unless it's a 90-day I just don't understand people that are not willing to have a little bit of compassion in times like this because these weren't foreseen circumstances. It's not like we had a 90 days of, oh, we knew this was going to happen. The family says the venue, Woodhaven Point, wouldn't offer a cash refund. They admit they spread the word and people started criticizing Woodhaven on social media and leaving negative reviews. In a statement, the venue's attorney said in part that Woodhaven expressed that it was willing to explore other ways to resolve Ms. Ramirez's signed contract and that no final decisions had been made regarding Ms. Ramirez's contract when the family began threatening litigation and making other negative comments about Woodhaven on social media. Well, first of all, it's very tragic that that, uh, you know, man committed suicide, man. Definitely sending healing energy to his family. But, you know, I think this is just a conversation about, you know, business versus ethics. You know, business-wise, the venue isn't wrong at all. Ethically, it's debatable. You know what I mean? But business-wise, they weren't wrong at all. Clearly, they got a contract. It's a 90-day policy. I guess they were 
within that ninety day policy or whatever it is, or mm-hmm. they not they don't have they don't have to give the money back. Well, they're not the, they're not wrong if they don't give the money back. Yeah, well, legally the they the don't contract. have to. That's the purpose of the contract. That's why people make you sign contracts. But situations and instances like that, like you know, at the end of the day, it's a business. And if you look at any venue hall, a lot of them are booked out, and they have to prepare for different types of weddings, different mm-hmm. types of things. So that's why they probably do it within 90 days now it is a tragedy it is tragic but the venue doesn't have to give anything back you know what i mean it's it's business you know? and i guess the tragedy surrounding it is what's making people be like damn can't you see what happened to These this young man wouldn't you shouldn't you give the money back it's Did not I- like they called off the wedding but that's why i said f f f ethically it's debatable business wise they aren't wrong at all well let's go to the phone lines hello who's this this is rachel reed Hey, Rachel, good morning. What are your thoughts? So, as a business owner, I kind of agree with Charlemagne that, you know, I have my budget set. I made that money. I have things planned for that money. Mm -hmm. So, business-wise, I got to do what I got to do because at the end of the day, I'm supporting my own family. But I do feel bad for the woman and her experience, but I still got to take care of my family. Yeah, that's, and that, and that's my whole thing. A lot of small businesses are hurting, and you know you're, you're paying check to check. The, the prices of everything is shooting through the roof. So, you know, like at, at the end of the day, you know, you need that money to support your family. You know, in certain cases, it's giving them really bad press exactly. right now too. People are coming yeah. at them, leaving bad reviews. Hello, who's this? This is Ashley. Hey, Ashley. Good morning. Good morning. What's your thought, Ashley? It's disgusting. I mean, come on. She gave two weeks notice. She lost her fiance to suicide. And this company, what? Had the food already cooked? The venue already set up? Yeah. Not even half? That's disgusting. I think it's everything. And I would blackball them. Leave a Google review in a second. I'm a reviewer and I will put it on there. By the way, even if your spouse dies, you're not getting a dime back. You know, I I mean, look, it is really bad press for them. People are doing that. And so I guess with this family, they did take it to the news and they did, you know, try to appeal to people in in that way. And I do feel like it's a lack lack of empathy, you know. But, I mean, I think business-wise, they don't have to refund They're not wrong business-wise. But but I do feel like ethically, I wouldn't feel good about myself. Hello, who's this? Good morning. This is Dominic from Indianapolis. How y'all doing? Good morning. How you feeling? I'm feeling good. So I just have to chime in on that um, Utah situation. Go ahead. Okay, so let's just be honest. As a business owner, we do lose money and things like that. And I'm a very, I'm a business owner as well. So with my business, my policy is very cut dry. In this situation, I do feel like, yes, the business may lose money. However, I do think they could have had a little bit of compassion and they could have maybe offered um, the young lady another time to use the venue. Or they could have offered her at least a deposit back because the business is not responsible, unfortunately, for his death. But if they had to pay outside sources as far as decorations and staff and bringing in companies to cook, they lose money. But bashing the business online, me personally, that would make me cut all ties with you and be like, it is what it is. But they should try to, you know, work something out because that is a very devastating situation. But Mm -hmm. they, they need to do a little something, but they're not obligated to do anything. Well, they did say that they did want to offer her an alternative date and they also were going to offer a home going service or something like that. So in, yeah, so well, alternative date don't make any sense. I mean, it's a wedding. Her yeah, groom is dead. Though, but oh, for like, something else, like for another event. But if like they the lady to, said, you know, you, get another you book date. out a wedding hall, they might have to leave a deposit for a DJ. They might have to leave a deposit mm-hmm. for lights. They might have to leave a deposit for, you know, rental of tables but or they, rental of chairs. They did offer another date, so that means they were willing to not do it within that uh, period of time, which means you could, you know, in that case, let somebody else rent the venue. Yeah, but in two weeks' time to rent a wedding. No, they said they would give her a different date. So that means they would not do it in those two weeks. They would hold that deposit and let her have another event in the future. So the de- so it's really not about that particular date and losing that money. It's just I, I mean, you don't know where their money was because they, they might have their money written and they might have to rent out a DJ, rent out lights, rent out seating, and maybe they can talk to the other venues and say, hey, this, this com- don't use it for this, use it for this. You this know conversation I mean? is about but ethics. Someone else could use it. It's not about business because business wise, they're not wrong at all. Not so at y'all all. can eliminate that. This is about ethics.
Now, what would you do ethically? That's the conversation. Right. Yeah, because my whole thing is if you're telling the woman we will let you use it on another date, then you might as well refund the money because it's not about that particular day that they had things reserved and in place. If they're saying we'll use this deposit and you can use well, this on another true, date. Yeah. No, because if I'm telling have... you, move, yeah, if I'm telling you I'm moving another date, I'm doing it. I'm keeping the money. Right, but I'm, I'm also, just moving the I date. I could be using yeah, that but... deposit that I put out for everything else. I might have had if if I own a venue and I know you're having a wedding, I might have to get deposits for chairs and tables. I might have to put out money for flowers and decorations. I might have to put out money for a DJ and lights. So they Those might flowers not, will be dead like if not, she wants to use it right, a, but, a year but, later. But, um, what I'm saying is they might not be giving me my money back so I might have to use it on another date. So that's all I'm saying. We don't know what that what that business's money and what they, what it looks like. Well then in that case can't the next time someone rents it you use the money with those same people? Well we'll talk about it more. 800-585-1051 <laughs> Call us up. What's your thoughts at the Breakfast Club? Good morning. <laughs> Like, you know, you with that. Call me. Add your opinion to the Breakfast Club top. Come on. 800-585-1051. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Now, if you're just joining us, we're talking about uh, a wedding that was supposed to take place in Utah. Now, um, her husband committed suicide, so of course they had to cancel the wedding. Uh, a lot of the vendors are giving her her money back, but they're saying that the venue is not. And here's the news report. Everyone reimbursed us except for the venue. Their policy is very clear on the contract. It says no refunds unless it's in 90 day. I just don't understand people that are not willing to have a little bit of compassion in times like this because these weren't foreseen circumstances. It's not like we had a 90 days of Oh, we knew this was going to happen. The family says the venue, Woodhaven Point, wouldn't offer a cash refund. They admit they spread the word, and people started criticizing Woodhaven on social media and leaving negative reviews. In a statement, the venue's attorney said in part that Woodhaven expressed that it was willing to explore other ways to resolve Ms. Ramirez's signed contract and that no final decisions had been made regarding Ms. Ramirez's contract when the family began threatening litigation and making other negative comments about Woodhaven on social media. So we're asking, what are your thoughts? 800-585-1051. Hello, who's this? Yo, what's going on? It's T from Brooklyn, you heard? What's up, bro? T from Brooklyn, what's, what's happening? What's your thoughts, man? Right. Yo, uh, yeah, man, I gotta agree with uh, with you and Charlamagne. Like, I mean, ethically, yes, this is debatable, but business-wise, like, uh, legally, this ain't, ain't nothing really wrong with this. It kind of sucks. cold world we live in. Suicide. What do you say? What, what's the last thing you said, it's brother? Cold. It, it's cold, but legally, it, it, uh, I mean, I got to agree with Charlemagne and Envy on this. All right. Thanks, yeah, I said business-wise, business wise, they not wrong. Ethically, it's debatable. Hello, who's this? Hey, guys. Good morning. This is Banco. Good morning, guys. Banco, good morning. How you doing? I'm just uh, touching base on that uh, topic with the, uh, the wedding thing over there. Yo, yes, man, sir. What's your thoughts, bro? I think it's, you know, it's not disgusting, but it's horrible. Um, you know what? I think they should have gave the money back to her because, honestly, uh, you know, it would have been a blessing in disguise. You know, they give the money back. She leaves a heartfelt message. The whole world books them forever. They're booked to 2050. Small story real quick. I had a client from a contractor. They paid cash for the roof and siding. House went up in fire. Insurance gave them a problem. We got wind of it. We came back, did the whole house, no charge. We ended up doing the whole block. What I'm saying oh, wow. is the message is the blessing and everything. Not to be selfish. I mean, if the world's a little better, I mean, whatever. But I'm just saying they would have got more business by giving that lady back their money. Yeah, and you I are definitely a blessing for doing things like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. I'm glad that you could afford it because a lot of businesses might not have been able to afford to do it over, you know? Cause a lot You're of people, right. You know? You're right. You're, you're absolutely right. But you know what? When you, you think of when you're thinking from your heart, you're not really thinking about the money. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, I mean, you know, everything's money comes, not money about goes. money. You know, everything's not about money. And uh, just like everybody know in the world, the universe works for you. You just got to try to do the best you can from your heart, and everything will come back for you. Have a blessed day, guys. Thank All right, man. Have a good one. I I agree right. with everything he said, but. If they still choose not to give the the woman the money back, they're still not wrong. Like it's not a it's no. not something they're no, doing. They're not, they're not doing anything wrong. wrong. Not at all. Hello, who's this? Hello. Hey, what's your name? Hi, my name is Leticia. Hey, good morning. What's your thoughts? Good morning. Well, um, I'm a widow. I lost I lost my husband three years ago, and um, I understand why the venue wouldn't uh, reimburse. And I, and I hear when people say, oh, they should, they should. But I realize one thing, when you become a widow, your world stops, but the whole world unfortunately doesn't stop for you. 
That's so, true. You know, and, and also that's why we need to have insurance. And, you know, and we sign contracts for those reasons. And if the contract says they don't have to do it, then they don't have to do it. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, thank yeah. you, Mama. And she's right. There's also insurance for things like that. When, when you get married or or anything big in your life, they offer insurance. So if something goes wrong, something doesn't happen, you get your money back. Mm-hmm. Do venues it. have insurance, too, if something happens? Uh, I don't know if venues have insurance. If a wedding doesn't take place, I don't think they have insurance for that, no. Yeah. Oh, if, there's a, if there's a destruction or something happens, a fire or a flood, yes. But for somebody not paying the second deposit, no, they don't have a... a, a, a uh, uh, that's what I said. Business-wise, the venue did nothing wrong. But, you know, ethically, it's just debatable. But, you know, it's like they, they're, not, they're not doing anything wrong. All right, so what's the moral of the story, guys? Uh, the moral of the story is what I've been saying all morning. It's like, you know, business-wise, I don't feel like they're wrong, but, you know, ethically, it's debatable. That's it. It's just a matter of ethics, you know? But I don't think they're wrong if they don't give the money back, per se. All right, well, we got rumors on the way? Yes, and let's talk about Fat Joe. Not only did he just host the BET Awards, which will be airing tomorrow, but he also is in the news because he's suing his accountants. We'll tell you what the uh, what the reports are about this $300,000. All right, we'll get into that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. This is The Rumor Report with Angela Yee. Rumor has it. On The Breakfast Club. So listen up. Nah, 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 nah. All right. Well, Fat Joe is suing his accountants. He lost over $300,000 in an alleged Ponzi scheme. He said he first noticed that several Amex accounts had been opened under his wife's name without their knowledge. The credit cards were used to make multiple large purchases, including tuition payments. And those tuition payments were for his former assistant, who we fired, Vanessa Rodriguez, for their for her daughter, and forty thousand dollars in combined Uber and Uber Eats charges. Eek. He said he also noticed several of his business entities were missing large deposits. One of them was sneaker addict touring. It was shorted out of more than three hundred thousand dollars. He says the money was uh, mismanaged uh, by funds because his accountant, I guess, was allegedly running a Ponzi scheme. So he said the company tried to cover their mismanagement by involving players from the Colorado Rockies, Houston Astros, and Chicago White Sox. And accounts were open, Amex accounts also in the names of these MLB players, uh, Jose Iglesias, Luis Garcia, and Dayan Viciedo. These accounts were then used to essentially transfer funds from one client's account to the other so the accounting firm could operate without actually using cash, allegedly. Sue the hell out of them, Joe. I hope you get all your money, too. Yo, could you imagine you no. see tuition payments for your assistant? assistant. No, for her, uh, his CPA's assistant. Yeah. That's wow. <laughs> that takes some balls. They're just going to Amex to tuition? Yeah. I'm and not, act like you're not going to see it. That's I mean, that's But you know what? He didn't see it for a while. You know, it took a, it was after the assistant got fired that he noticed some irregularities. And so, yeah. And Fat Joe's had issues before with his accountants. So this is not the first time. All right. Now, Snoop Dogg recently made an appearance on Stephen A. Smith's No Mercy podcast. And he did make this announcement. And then we bonded over the years and we've been a part of each other's life. And I'm going to tell you this. You're the first one to hear this. Me and Dr. Dre have been working on an album for the past two months, and it'll be done in November. And it's produced by Dr. Dre. It's our 30th anniversary <clears throat> to Doggy Style. Wow. And the name of the album is Missionary. Why that name? The first album was Doggy Style. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I like that name, yo. Because that name says, like, you know, we older now, so we're not into the tricks we used to do. You know what I mean? We're just keeping it nice and basic now. It's facts. Those I don't facts. know if I like the name Missionary, but I'm happy to see Snoop and Dre back in the studio together. Yeah, I want to hear the music now. Mm-hmm. All right, now Kodak Black has uh, apologized. He went on social media, he was on live, and he apologized to PNB Rock's girlfriend for a post that he made after PNB Rock passed. And. You know, he had said, kill yourself and things like that. And here's what he had to say. To, to bro, girl, I was angry at that moment when I first heard it. Because I just, I had just woke up that that, that, um, that day when it happened. And I had like a mind green. I was kidding me. And it was like, hearing that sh-, You know, I just went with what everybody was saying. Like, oh, man, she posted the address. Like, before I even, like, really tried to, you know, just Starting to come out two, two, three days ago. It made it seem like she posted the address or she was something like you said. Cause at the end of the day, I don't care about no like that. That's that's my dog. 
But any any one of my dogs, like I don't care about your your girl. I could care less about her. But you know, I pay my respect. Okay, like you know what I'm saying. But other than that, like I don't, wish, like, you know, I don't wish no bad on her and shit like that. So I give my apologies to her. I hope she keep her head up. I'm glad he gave an apology. Mm -hmm. He said something too in there that that you know that most people do. He was like, I just saw what everybody on the internet was saying, so I just ran with that. Which is what 95% of people do. They don't think for themselves. They wait to see what the internet is thinking. What's the popular opinion online? And then they run with that. Yeah, and you know, she was robbed as well. And she had to witness this whole thing happen. And then have social media gang up on her and turn against her. And accuse her of all kinds of awful things. Yeah. She already felt terrible. So imagine the trauma that she was dealing with. And then to have this happen. And mm -hmm. so, again, you know, showing some love to the family members. To his girlfriend Stephanie as well mm. alright and that is your rumor report also there's a bunch of different sex positions that Snoop could name the album other than missionary okay like, I'm just like saying I just looked I looked a few up just now you know okay. of course, you probably wouldn't want to call it 6 9 I understand why but then you got the corkscrew you got face off you got the pretzel dip you got the G Wiz G Wiz would be dope because of the whole you know G thing you got the cowgirls helper you got the wheelbarrow you got the magic mountain Reverse cowgirl, regular cowgirl, you got cowboy. I don't know if cowgirl would be a good name for the album. I'm just saying. <laughs> you got cross booty, you got the caboose. <laughs> you know what I mean? You just can't go to, mi you can't go missionary after doggy style is what I'm saying. You know what I mean? I mean, that's where you usually go. You go doggy style and then you go missionary. No, actually you go missionary and then you go doggy style. That's usually how it happens. Yeah, yeah I'm just saying. He's getting old now, so just missionary. Just hey, that's just what I don't like, though. I don't want them to just feel like you know they just basic and they old now and they just you know going through the motions. No, not Snoop and Dre. They need something bigger. Pretzel dip. Let's go. New album. Pretzel dip. Snoop Dogg. Doctor Dre. I don't okay. know about that one. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about pretzel dip, bro. I ain't even look to see what the pretzel dip was. <laughs> <Let me see laughs> look at you. Even know what the pretzel dip is. Pretzel dip. Lie. Lie on your right side, your partner kneels, scraddling your right leg and curling your left leg around their left side. Maybe not pretzel dip, bro. With this sex position, oh, no, this should be it. With this sex position, you get the deeper penetration of doggy style while still being able to make that important eye contact. Or if penetration isn't your thing, your partner can easily grind up against you, stimulating uh, your clitoris. Okay. Pretzel dip. That's the new album, Snoop. Deeper oh. than doggy style. Well, speaking of pretzel dips, who are you giving your donkey to? Uh, four after the hour, we need Senator John Kennedy to come to the front of the congregation. Uh, we'd like to have a word with him, please. All right, we'll get to that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Our audible pick of the day is monsters and how to tame them. Hear Kevin Hart's hilarious and smart advice on low self-esteem. Start listening when you sign up for a free 30-day trial at the home of storytelling. Audible.com slash breakfast. There is no question that there are problems in this country between police and community. Yes, you are a donkey. To the latest on that police killing of a black man. Now to new developments in the deadly spa shooting rampage. Um, and yesterday was a really bad day for him, and this is what he did. And so we are in a state of emergency. Okay, white supremacist violence is and always has been the number one threat to our society. But I'm also very proud that my wife is white. My wife is white. Damn it. The, the Breakfast Club, bitches. All right, Charlene, please tell me, why was I your donkey of the day? Well, donkey of the day for Monday, October 3rd, goes to Louisiana State Senator John Kennedy. John Kennedy is running for re-election to the United States Senate. Uh, his three main Democratic challenges are Gary Chambers Jr., Luke Mixon, and Sarita Stipe. Now, Senator Kennedy is running ads for re-election in Louisiana, and he is tapping into a strategy nationwide that both Republicans and Democrats are tapping into, and that's the public sphere about the high crime rates that are happening all over the country. I know folks want to say it's just Republicans doing this, but let's not act like tough on crime. Joe Biden, who gave us things like the 86 and 96 crime bills, isn't using the high crime rates across the country to his own business benefit as well. Okay. President Biden's Safe for America Act is his crime fighting strategy that will cost about $37 billion. And the Safe for America plan includes money to hire and train at least 100,000 police officers. So yes, every politician wants to be the politician that can ensure public safety to the people because that is something folks will think about when they are in the voting booth, voting booth, especially during the midterms, okay? Well, Senator Kennedy is taking things a step further. He's not just pointing out that violent crime is surging in Louisiana. He's blaming it on marchers uh, protesting against police brutality and for people who advocate to defund the police. Now, once again, for the 
billionth time. To fund the police simply means to fund alternative services such as mental health programs or job training that will reduce crime. I personally like that because it's getting to the root of the issue. It's easy to be tough on crime after the fact, but when you invest in people early and provide them the resources they need, uh, you probably keep them from turning to a life of crime in the first place. But Senator Kennedy opposes measures to defund the police. In fact, this 30 second ad that he's running has a very specific request. If you don't like the police, in fact, he gives you an alternative. Can we listen to Senator John Kennedy's ad, please? Violent crime is surging in Louisiana. Woke leaders blame the police. I blame the criminals. A mom should not have to look over her shoulder when she's pumping gas. I voted against the early release of violent criminals and I opposed defunding the police. Look, if you hate cops just because they're cops, the next time you get in trouble, call a crackhead. I'm John Kennedy. <laughs> And I approve this message. <laughs> Listen, man, I'm not going to lie. I try my hardest not to give these things any energy because when I do give them energy, I'm just helping them advertise. That's wild. But that's hilarious. OK, not only is it hilarious, it just shows how he's ignoring the concerns of a large group of people in Louisiana. And that's black people, black people who are simply tired of being victims of police brutality. Look, I don't know what a woke leader is, okay? In fact, I hate wokeness. I wish some of these woke people would go take a nap because they're too tired. And when you're tired, you don't think straight. But to not listen to the concerns of protesters who are marching, protesters, you know, who are protesting against police brutality, to not listen to them is nuts, okay? As a senator, you should be against police brutality if you're an elected official. That's it. OK, but someone like John Kennedy will never truly be against police brutality because police are brutalizing the people that John Kennedy is demonizing in this video. And that's black people. And we just call it what it is. OK, look, I'm not against police. I just want police to truly protect and serve. And I hate the racial disparities that exist within law enforcement. And when there is an emergency, yes, I'm calling the police. All right. Senator John Kennedy and all these people are smart enough to know that folks aren't against the police. We are just against police brutality. OK, that's it. I just want to know what kind of advice is that from a public official to simply call a crackhead? That's all you got for me. We offer intangible solutions uh, to potentially end police brutality. And you just telling me to call a crackhead if I'm against the police. Can we hear it one more time, please? Violent crime is surging in Louisiana. Woke leaders blame the police. I blame the criminals. A mom should not have to look over her shoulder when she's pumping gas. I voted against the early release of violent criminals and I opposed defunding the police. Look, if you hate cops just because they're cops, the next time you get in trouble, call a crackhead. I'm John Kennedy and I approve this message. By the way, violent crime and police brutality, uh, you know, are two different things. I don't blame police for violent crime i blame the criminals for violent crime but when police commit a violent crime to an innocent person i want them treated like a criminal how is that too why is that so hard to understand that shouldn't be too difficult right please give senator john kennedy uh the biggest hee-haw uh -huh. uh -huh. matter of fact let kathy griffin give senator john kennedy the biggest hee-haw Please give this giant jar of mail the biggest hee-haw. How about my girl Chelsea Handler? Chelsea Handler wanted to say anything to Senator John Kennedy? Hee-haw, hee-haw. That is way too much Dan Mayonnaise. What about the god Chris Rock? God Chris Rock got anything to say? Cracker ass cracker. Oh, okay. What about my girl? My girl down there. My girl down there working fast food. What she got to say? Singing right there. What up? See, was that singing? Ain't that that right there? Uh -huh. It should say singing cracker. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you be snorting a lot recently, bro. Getting you know, old. You know. What does snorting have to do with getting you know? old? I don't know. I never used to snort before. <laughs> no, you just I never used to snort before COVID. Yeah. Might be the vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> Blaming everything else on hey, the vaccine. The right. Might be the vaccine. All right. Well, thank you for that donkey of the day. Mm -hmm. Now, when we come back, let's talk Jeffrey Dahmer. Have you guys seen it? Uh, yes, I saw... The first three episodes so far. I saw the well. I saw the first four kind of because my wife and daughter was watching it mm -hmm. when I was on the couch. So I was in and out of sleep. Mm -hmm. I was in and out of consciousness, but I saw it. I saw enough. And I mm -hmm. said there was a lot of backlash 
from people who feel like this shouldn't be happening. I agree. But clearly, the families are still affected of, of the people who were killed by the families Dahmer don't like it at all. At all. And none of the money is going to any of them. But I will say this did take a different approach. And there was a lot did of things. Did it, though? What's the I approach it took? Well, I think part of what they're trying to show in this is how the neighbors were calling the cops nonstop, especially one neighbor, uh, Glenda Cleveland. She's the woman who tried to stop him. And there were all these instances mm-hmm. where uh, things could have been prevented. Mm-hmm. But the cops didn't believe the neighbors, the black people in the neighborhood. They believe this white man. Instead. Oh, we knew that, though. I mean, the Netflix tried to spin it as this was a, uh, from the victim's perspective. I didn't see that at all. Well, let's, in let's, the first four episodes. Because well, I definitely didn't know all of this information. Well, let's open up the phone lines. 800-585-1051. People are upset that they even told this story. What is your thoughts on it? Let's talk about it's it. It's been I, told a lot. Yeah, I just don't see... I don't Like, most true crime uh, stories have a bigger purpose, meaning that they're raising awareness for a case that you may not know about. Right. And, you know, they might not have had any justice in the case yet. So they're raising awareness for that. I don't see what... The purpose of this is other than just entertainment. Yeah, well, but what things that you cop- just told me that I, I didn't know about that that people were telling me. Yeah, there was the a lot of things I didn't know. They were listening. I didn't know any of that. And some of the cops, and we'll talk more about it, but um, the cops that could have prevented it when he had the underage boy that ran out and escaped and they brought him back, they actually did um, get suspended, but then they got uh, reinstated with back pay. Mm-hmm. Well, let's talk about it when we come back. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Topic time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Let's talk about it. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Now, if you're just joining us, we're talking about the Jeffrey Dahmer uh, series that's on Netflix. Mm-hmm. Now, you're saying uh, people were pretty upset that uh, they were showing this? Yeah, some people are like, take it down. At one point, they had the LGBTQ tag on it, and Netflix did take that off. I don't understand why. You got to take good representation with the bad representation. What do you mean? Because he's not a monster, you know, because he's gay, but he was a gay monster. And a lot of this is rooted in, you know... Him having gay love interests and he picking people up from gay clubs. Like, you know, you got to have good representation with bad representation. Like, I don't see the problem. They should have kept it as an LGBT thing. Now, people don't understand the purpose of this Netflix series. So, you, you've seen it. Do you think it has a, a good purpose? Charlemagne doesn't necessarily I don't think everything so. has to have. But I will say um, there were a lot of things that I wasn't aware of. You know, I know the story of Dahmer and... Um, there were things I didn't know. Like, a, a lot of the focus was on the neighbor... Uh, Glenda Cleveland is her name in real life and she was calling the cops a lot of the neighbors were calling the cops he lived in a black neighborhood he was going to you know black bars picking up uh, people of color men of color to bring them back to his house and neighbors were complaining about the smell coming through the vents it was disgusting the cops did nothing they heard screams coming from his apartment the cops did nothing there was one point when there was a 14 year old boy who he abducted and brought back to his house And the boy managed to escape, even though he was drugged and, you know, naked and was running outside. And the cops came and brought him back to Jeffrey Dahmer's house, even though he said Jeffrey Dahmer said that was his boyfriend. He didn't have any ID to prove that this kid was of age and he was clearly disoriented. And he was like, oh, we were just partying. And, you know, this is my lover. And the, you know, Glenda Cleveland, they called the cops and were like, yo, what happened to the little boy? Like, did you guys take care of that? And the cops are like, yeah, everything is fine. We took him back. And she was like, what? They played the actual 911 call and she was trying to call the FBI. They ignored her. So there were a lot of things that I didn't know. And two of those cops that answered the 911 call, they got fired. And then they got reinstated with back pay after, you know, they went against that. And so I feel like that's just disgusting. And the city of Milwaukee did pay a settlement to that family of the 14 year old boy. But those cops were reinstated and they got back pay. One of them was elected as president of the Milwaukee Police Association. I think that's disgusting. Yeah, I can totally understand why the families are upset about this, though, because I don't see what the bigger meaning of this show is. You know, other than entertainment. And they calling it monster, but they seem to be giving us all these reasons as to why Jeffrey Dahmer is not a monster. Like, they're humanizing him. Mm-hmm. They're just humanizing him. Like, you know, they're showing his backstory and the issues he had with his parents. And, it's, it's you know, it's good to know how these people become these monsters, but it don't make me feel sorry for Jeffrey Dahmer in any way, shape, or form. I think people I feel don't. like it glorifies. It, really? it does. They got him. He's dancing he and all kind of stuff. Like, he's dancing. 
Yes, man. It's scene, mean? This scene where he's dancing, like, it's not telling me anything I didn't know. It's just that, you know, like, we know it's police corruption. We know police don't care about black people. We know police don't care about gay people. So I'm just like, what is the larger meaning? Like, usually when you see these true crime stories, mm -hmm. it's because they're bringing awareness to something that we may not be aware of, or it's a case that's unsolved. Like, I don't know what the meaning of this is other than entertainment. And then, you know what? Even in the first episode, the guy who escaped, which was the reason that Jeffrey Dahmer got caught, um, you know, the, now every, there's a whole conversation about him because his life spiraled after that. He should he be never compensated. Got, he never got any type of psychiatric help. Um, that's right. You know, and so, I mean, I think that's awful too. That but he, and he's also complaining. He he's saying like, yo, I haven't received any type of help, any type of compensation, but yet they're just reliving my trauma on, t on Netflix for what? And I, I think they definitely should give money to the families of the victims. Hello? Hello, yes. Hey, what's your name? Good morning. Good morning. Hi, this is Aziza. This is Aziza Khabibi. Hi, DJ MZ, Angela Yee, Charlamagne. How y'all doing? Peace, Hello. peace, peace. What's your thoughts, Mama? Um, I'm calling from New Jersey, and I don't. My my thoughts on Dahmer is a little mixed because one, as someone who has been on a true crime series, I chose to be on it and tell my story, so I definitely understand. Um, be, being sympathetic to the family of the of Dahmer's victims, but at the same time, I feel like it is necessary to tell these stories. I'm watching it with my 14 year old son, and it's definitely a teaching tool for him, especially when it got to the point that you know, being involved or talking to strangers mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. looking out for the signs. So as a parent, I definitely think that it's necessary to tell these stories, but in consideration of the families of this of the victims, um, I think that it could have been done a little more sensitively. Like I think more consideration, more empathy for telling their stories. They could have reached out handled better. Because they didn't yeah, reach they out to any of these people. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. Especially if and you Go ahead. I said, especially if you're spinning it as this is a story that's going to tell the perspective of the victims. Like, that's not what I... I didn't get that from what I saw. Right. I don't think that it's... I mean, the victims don't know Dahmer's backstory. They don't know his history. So I'm on episode three, and I don't see anything from the perspective of the victims. Me neither. Now, yeah, the neighbor. The neighbor, those people that reported him, yeah, I see their perspective. But as far as the victims, I'm not seeing that at all. Thank you, Mama. 800-585-1051. We're talking the Jeffrey Dahmer series on Netflix. Uh, people are upset that this is even out. Let's talk about it. What are your thoughts? It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Call me. Add your opinion to The Breakfast Club top. Come on. 800-585-1051. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Angela Yee, Charlamagne Tha Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We're talking about the Jeffrey Dahmer series on Netflix. People are upset that this documentary is even out. They're saying that it almost feels like it's glorifying. Oh, by the way, killers. it's not a documentary. But well, a series, I should yeah, say. Yeah, series. Series. It says that uh, people feel it like it's glorifying serial killers. Hello, who's this? Hi, this is Paul. Good morning. What's your thoughts Hello? on the Jeffrey Dahmer uh, so series? I think that... I mean, I think having docu-series like this is important because mm -hmm. it allows other generations to kind of see what happened. It gives us more in-depth on what happened. And then as we are having all these developments with mental health, it also gives us like another idea of, hey, damn, this is what was going on. Or he had all these issues and nobody caught it. It's just kind of educational. Right. But it can be dangerous when it gets into the hands of the internet because now you have people romanticizing him saying that he's sexy or Jeffrey what? would have got me. You got yeah, I've seen, that. seen that a lot. That's awful. I didn't you see got Rick Ross talking about he wants to buy he wants the glasses. glasses. You see they're and auctioning they're off those stuff. glasses for $150,000 or something but, but, like but that. But that, that is because the series <laughs> romanticizes him, though. Like, y'all acting like the series don't make him out to be like... First four episodes... He, they make him out to be a figure you should have empathy for and mm -hmm. sympathy for because of the way his parents treated him. You know what I mean? It's, it's like... I don't know. That first episode when I saw him go in that bar and, and you know, it's the first episode where he tries to... I didn't have no sympathy for him. I Did you see like, the second, third, and fourth, and fifth? Did you see everything else after that? I saw some of that, but I still felt like he was disgusting because we all know how it started. That's why they started with that. Yeah, I felt that way too, but they definitely romanticized him in a big way. Like, especially when they show... Why are you, like, why are you dancing? Why what the hell you got to celebrate? You just had a problem with him dancing. Though. It wasn't just that. It's a whole. It's just I don't know. I just I just don't see the bigger meaning behind it. I'm listening to what everybody's saying, and I still I'm like I'm like uh, okay. Hello, who's this? 
Hey, what's up, man? This is Mom from Detroit, man. What's up? What up, Doe? What, what's your thoughts, brother? Man, I man, I sat there and watched that whole episode last night, man, all the way to 10, man. That's, it was disgusting. I don't think we needed to relive that. That's how you I watched feel. the whole thing. That's how I feel. I don't, I, don't, I don't see the bigger purpose, my brother. Man, it's sickening. It's sickening. The, uh, somebody needs to put the uh, Milwaukee Police Department on front. Yeah, I I think that for sure. Yeah. And, now, uh, Charlemagne, huh? Charlemagne, I give you kudos from up in uh, Nedra to Wab a lot, man. That's my sister-in-law. So, oh, I man. I love Nadra. I got Nadra. Nadra's going to be at the Mental Wealth Expo uh, th this Saturday from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Mary L. Marquis in Times Square. My second annual Mental Wealth Expo. Nadra will be there. All right, brother. So what's the moral of the story if there is a moral? I don't know. I, and listen, I like true crime, but I like the kind of true crime that, you know, raises awareness to larger issues or helps with, you know, cases that are unsolved. I mean, in, this, in, in a situation like this, maybe there's something that can be done to the Milwaukee Police Department. Maybe they should still be held accountable you know, for how they dropped the ball in the 90s. I don't even know if they have been, you know. It doesn't feel like they have been. Well, I didn't see this this Jeffrey Dahmer uh, series on Netflix, but I do like to watch these usually so I can see things that people usually miss signs. So if I ever see it again, I, I like a lot of times I have my kids watch certain things like this too, especially the older ones. So if there's signs that they can see or something that maybe somebody missed or looked over or what they should be looking for. So I do really like to watch these type like of things. Like even the Zodiac Killer. Did y'all ever watch that about the Zodiac Killer? No. That that movie? Mm -mm. And how they had to, um, you know, how they solved that crime or Ted Bundy. I think a lot of times, you know, some kids don't know this story. I was talking to one of our old interns and she didn't know anything about Dahmer. Mm. All right, well, we got rumors on the way. Yes, and Life Jennings, since we're talking about Jeffrey Dahmer, uh, talks about being locked up with Jeffrey Dahmer and singing for him in prison. All right, we'll get to that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Hey, Kenny. It's about time. What's going on? Yeah. Rumor Report. Rumor Report. This is The Rumor Report. Talk to him. With Angela Yee on The Breakfast Club. All right, well, uh... Nick Cannon. Congratulations! He welcomed his 10th child with Brittany Bell. That's their third baby together. And that baby was born on Friday, September 23rd. So he said another blessing. Congratulations to Nick Cannon and to Brittany Bell. This has to be the most repeated headline of the last couple of years. Is there any other headline that gets repeated as much as Nick Cannon welcomes another baby? I thought we congratulated him for that baby. No, already. this is a new baby. This okay. Rise Messiah Cannon. All right, well, congratulations, Nick. He said this is a new one. This is the way you reason you feel like that because he you got 10 of them. I thought we did that. That's why. Already. Okay. All right, Candy Burris. When are you going to name one Deja Vu? That's what he needs to do. Next baby got to be named Deja Vu, Nick. Or maybe another one Cannon. <laughs> All right, now Candy Burris is going to allegedly earn a massive payday as she signs on for Real Housewives of Atlanta season 15, according to Radar Online. Uh, filming is going to start as early as next week, and she made more than $2 million last season, so they're saying this season is probably going to be even more than that. And according to Love B. Scott, there's going to be a newcomer to the cast. Everybody from last season is locking in their contracts and rejoining, but now they're saying that uh, Janelle Stevens may be making her debut in season 15. I just saw Janelle when I was in Atlanta. She actually has a hair care company called Camille Rose Naturals that I use. So shout out to Janelle Stevens. All right, and Kiki Palmer was on Instagram and she has launched her own digital network. It's called Key TV. Hi, I'm Lauren Palmer, and this is Kiki Palmer, the brand I created 20 years ago, all the way back in Illinois with my mom. In those 20 years, I learned how to be a few things, like an actress. Did I mention I could sing too? And I even learned to write, because you know I have a lot to say. And last, but certainly not least, I learned how to be a director, but most importantly, I learned how to be a collaborator, and I want to share everything I learned with you because this is my greatest dream of all all it takes is one of us to unlock a door to unlock a million doors for each other i'm so excited to introduce you guys to key tv where our stories matter and where we are represented as the keys to the culture dropping the clues bombs for kiki palmer all right now life jennings has so for some reason shared a story about being locked up with jeffrey dahmer and uh you know this is just a weird timing and even the way he told this story. But that was his roomie? Here's what he had to say. I'm gonna go ahead and tell y'all my little Jeffrey Dahmer story. Like I I know the little homie, man. 
Uh, I mean, I wasn't his friend or nothing like that. You know, a lot of people gonna say it's cap, but it's easy to check. I was locked up in 92. He had to get extradited from Milwaukee for, you know, the little body that he had. And of course, while I'd be sweeping up, I'd be singing. And then one particular day, you know, I walked past the thing. He was, you know, Jeff was like, hey, 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 hey. You know, I, I, I like r and I'm like, you like R&B? He's like, yeah, yeah, that's all right, cool. Ain't think nothing of it. Went back and locked down in my cell. So then I started yelling out to the homie through the door. And he was asking me, y'all never guess what song he asked me that I know. Men Conditions, Breaking My Heart, Pretty Brown Eyes, man. He asked me that I know that record. And I sang the record. He beat it on the door and all this stuff. I mean, I, I, ain't, I ain't, you know, saying like the homie is a celebrity or nothing. I'm just telling you my experience, man. Ooh, well, Jeffrey trying to be funny because Jeffrey liked hearts. That's number one. And I don't know if they sh showed this in the series. I don't think they did. But there was stories that he used to walk around with the eyeballs of his victims in his pockets until they would turn to maggots. Disgusting. Mm -hmm. So for him to it, request breaking my heart and pretty brown eyes? Yeah, I don't know about telling that story like that. The homie. Yeah, and I wouldn't say that's weird timing for life to tell uh, this story either because everybody talking about the Dama story on I Netflix. I think it's the way he said it, though. Why like, wouldn't he tell the story now? The homie. Just yeah, it's just crazy. him talking. Crazy. I get it. Yeah, they didn't mean his friend. Yeah. <sighs> I don't think so. He's terrible. All right, now let's talk about Joe Button on his podcast, and this podcast has since been removed. He's gotten criticism for something that he said on the show about faking putting on condoms before sex. And even I done walked in the corner and faked like I was putting a condom on before. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did that. You faked the put one thousand percent. That was that was my that was my poor that, that was my poor no. execution of my of my plan after I mastered it, which was to just b through the lambskin. Let me go find. I don't know if I ever used a lambskin. Let me go find the thinnest condom you, in the world. You, you, you bastard, do that, huh? <laughs> do it. Yeah. You planned the. Bastard. Yeah, I'm not having it, but. Can I? <laughs> yo, what? Yo, you're a sicko, for real, yo. No, I used to be. Uh, okay. Please four, don't. Six, please, what time, what time for growth? Please don't misrepresent me. Uh, All right, well, since then, he's gotten a lot of backlash for doing that because that is a crime to pretend to put on a condom before sex and that. Now, he responded. Is that a crime? Yes, it's called stealthing, and you actually can't do that. If you ever watched that series, um, that series that was on Netflix, I May Destroy You, that was part of something that happened to her. That actually is considered rape if you pretend to put on a condom and don't. And so she didn't realize that, you know, when a guy did that to her, that it actually was a crime to do that. So if you pretend to put on a condom and lie, that's rape? Yeah, it's it's actually considered sexual assault. Well, I just I looked Stealthing it up. Is. I looked it up just to be accurate. Stealthing isn't considered a crime in the U.S. Only California has codified stealthing an offense. However, it is a civil offense. That means the victim can sue the perpetrator, but it's not considered a crime. Yeah, so California is is the only state where it's illegal right now. But you know, I mean, it's a t you can't pretend that anything could happen to a woman. Imagine you're like you put a condom on, and he's like, yeah, but he really didn't. Or sometimes even removing a condom. Yeah, but that's not. Rape. And I just want to tell people it's it's considered sexual assault by many people because imagine you're having sex and the guy slides the condom off you can't do that like you can't and, and for anybody listening no that's not a cool thing to do now Joe no it's Button, not a cool thing to do but they were throwing rape around and I was kind of confused and I didn't know that was a, a crime well by the standard of many laws it is considered sexual assault okay they do consider it that and so um, he responded y'all really want all black men in jail lol and I didn't hear the whole episode, so I don't know if there's some type of context I'm missing. But no, you cannot do that. And for anybody, you know, if that ever happened to you, do not feel like that's your fault, ladies. Anything could happen. You could get pregnant. You can get a disease, an STD. You cannot pretend to put on a condom or slide off a condom during sex, okay? All right, now Diddy uh, is talking about a conversation he had with Gunna. He said, spoke to my brother Gunna the other day. God takes us through crazy journeys sometimes for reasons we don't know. To anyone going through a tough time, stay in a high frequency and know that everything happens for a reason. Keep the faith and stay laser focused. And here's Diddy talking to Gunna. I'm praying, man. I'm praying. Yeah, that's it. They're going to work. Right? Yeah. I'm going to preserve myself, get my mind together, and, you know, get myself right for what's not going to make God do, you know? Yeah. Yeah, man, I've been doing good. Yeah, I'm sorry you're going through this, though, King. You feel me? Yeah, but it's, it's part of the testimony, so I, I, you know, I got to I gotta just understand that, you know what I'm saying? The same way it's out here, it's part of the, of the journey still, you know, so... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know you was cold before. 
But you know, sometimes, you know, God, that's what he does though, you know what I'm saying? That's what he does, he takes us through these crazy journeys, man. I know you're supposed to be out here, man, and um, I know it's just gonna make you stronger, and we getting ready for your return. All right, Kim K also posted support for Gunna, and they did reveal that he's been dropped from any violence acts and hasn't been named by any of the witnesses. And so they are going to give him a third attempt at Bond soon, and people are hopeful that that will work out. And Chloe also revealed that she wrote the song for the night about Gunna. All right, yeah, I'm I mean, they don't have them tied to no violent acts and no witnesses have claimed uh, called him out. He should get a Bond. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So he's up for Bond soon. We'll see. And that is your rumor report. All right. People's Choice Mix is up next. Hit your request, and it's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Our audible pick of the day is Fairy Tale. Stephen King takes you through a doorway to another world. Get ready. Start listening when you sign up for a free 30-day trial at the home of storytelling, audible.com slash breakfast club. Hey everybody, it's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Now, Charlamagne, you got a positive note? Yes. First, I want to tell everybody, uh, make sure you scream uh, my late night talk show, Hell of a Week, on Paramount+. Plus. You know, we come on every Thursday night uh, right after the Daily Show on Comedy Central. Thank you to everybody that's been watching and, um, you know, screaming and all of that good stuff. So, Thank you very much. And I want to tell folks, man, make sure you go register to come to the second annual Mental Wealth Expo this Saturday, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Marriott Marquis Times Square right here in New York City, man. I have so many amazing people there. Some of the best mental health professionals in the country from Nadra Tawab Glover to Dr. Rita Walker to Dr. Spirit to Dr. Alfie Breland Noble. Uh, we have a keynote speech from Pastor Torre Roberts and, and Sarah Jakes Roberts. So it's a free event. All you got to do is go to mentalwealthexpo.com to register to be there. So we'll see you this Saturday. Now, the positive note is simply this, and I want you to remember this on this fine Monday. When you don't play about yourself, you don't allow others to play with you either. Power 105 one is the Breakfast Club, bitches! Y'all finished or y'all done?